Welcome to the second video of our Next.js tutorial series, where we're going to help you become a Next.js Pro. Today, we're going to check how Next.js handles dynamic routing. Don't forget that if you don't want to miss out on any of these tutorials, you can sign up to my newsletter down below, and you can also head over to dailydev.io, where I publish all of these videos as an article. So let's get on with this video. So last time we were here, we built a dog-based app to understand the basics of how Next.js worked. We introduced the concept of pages, how Next.js scaffolds our application and how we can use our React components to render pages within Next.js. So if you missed that one, I highly recommend that you go back. I'm gonna put a link somewhere around one of these sides and then we can continue right here. So moving on to today's video, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new Next.js project based on the previous project that we built on the last video. For your reference, all the code on these videos is publicly available on GitHub. I'm going to put the link down below. And that is exactly what we're going to use to generate our Next.js based on another template. So the previous video code is right here on this repository. And what we're going to do to create a new project based on this one is on the following command. So I'm going to do npx to use the create next app package without installing it. I'm going to call it Next.js dynamic routing, not like that. I'm going to say that we want to, want to use npm. We also want to use TypeScript. And now this is the part where we specify the template we want to use. I'm going to copy this URL right here. Go back, paste it, and then I'm going to press enter. Like I said right here, it's going to be downloading the files from the repository that we specified. And then once we CD into our new repository. Let's open up dynamic, dynamic code. Open up in code. Give it a second. Let me enlarge this. And this is exactly the code that we had previously. So I'm doing this to separate every tutorial on its own repository. If you want to, you can work on top of your previous code and you're going to get exactly the same result. So what we have here is when within the pages directory, we have the, the folder docs, which is gonna create the route docs for us. And inside it, we only have a single doc page. If we go back and fire up this project, npm run dev to start the development server, then should pop up right here. So this is what we have. This is the index page of the project. And then we have a link to the doc that we created right here. So just as a recap, if you go back to code, create a new dog, it can have the same name. Let's just create another dogo and say that this is another dogo. Okay, in this way, you can have an, another page under this domain, right? This is another dogos. And now that we have our application up and running, let's learn more about what dynamic routing is, why we need it, and how Next.js handles it for client rendered pages. So why do we need it? This is probably obvious at this point. Predefined path-based routes like we used in the last video are not always the best choice in large and complex applications, like the one that we are trying to build based on probably an infinite number of docs. So if we would keep to the previous approach, it would involve creating a React component for every doc that we needed to render within our application which in turn would mean that the application developers would need to create new code, would need to test it, would need to push it to the main branch and then eventually push the changes to production. This is not only a CI/CD nightmare as it is also the recipe for a lot of spaghetti code. As an example, it's exactly what we did previously. If someone says now that we need to add another doc to the website, we would need to go to the docs folder, duplicate one of the previous components because probably all the docs would be rendered within the same structure of the page. And we would create yet another dogo. I'm actually gonna name it that way. Yet another dogo. And then we would change the contents of that page. This is yet another dogo. And now we would have the new doc on the page, on the website. 
this is yet another doggo. And now you can imagine this going over and over and over again. By the end of the development, you would have any number of dogs within this folder, and probably all of them would follow exactly the same structure. Now, since we don't want to duplicate the previous component every time we want to add a new dog, also all the pages present the same structure, this is a perfect use case for the introduction of component usability. If you've used components previously in your web journey, you're probably already familiar with their benefits. Components allow you to define the common application structures that you can then easily reuse without the need to rewrite their appearance and behavior. You then arrange those components in a way you wish to form larger, more complex components, and then eventually become the pieces that build full application pages. Then if later, if you wish to change that structure, the design or the functionality of a specific component, you only need to update the components you want, and those changes will reflect everywhere they are used. Now, how does this translate to our example. You could argue that you could place all of this within a specific doc component. You could then call it doc something and pass in all the props that you need. But even with this approach, with a single component that you could use to render the page or also create a doc page component and store it somewhere and then build it within it, you would still need to create a file for each doc you want to add and then define the structure exactly the same way. So let's move on to the next approach and the recommended one. And that takes us to how Next.js handles it. So like with any modern web framework, Next.js allows you just that to use reusable components as pages or a single component as a page, like we're gonna check. And it's gonna allow us to have a reusable page for the application just from a single exported React component. Then later, if you need to change every dog within your application, so the page structure that represents a dog, you would only need to update one single component. So that's great. So now in order to generate dynamic pages or reusable pages within our Next.js app, there are a couple of changes that we need to make to the structure. So that this way Next.js can understand that it is a dynamic route and not a static one like we are using now. And this is gonna also affect the routes that Next.js is going to build and serve your website on. So let's move on to the changes that we need to make to the app to make this work. So the first thing is that we're going to delete all the new files we just created. So the new pages for two new individual docs. And it all starts with the file name within the pages folder. To Next.js, this file right here within the docs folder within the pages folder indicates to Next.js that there is a route called a dogo served under a parent route called dogs served under the application. But for dynamic and reusable pages, they will be exported from special named files surrounded by brackets like this. So instead of having a single specific doc page, we're going to start the file name with a bracket. I'm going to call it ID within it. We could call it name, but ID is more specific. And then the rest of the route is still going to be defined by the folder hierarchy that we talked about in a previous video. Now, what does this mean? Now, if we consider the folder hierarchy that we currently have in the application, any route matching the slash dogs slash ID pattern will be rendered by the React component exported by this special ID file. So what this means is that now we have a single file within our docs application. And if we go back to our website and we reload the same page, it is still gonna be served. But now I don't have to specify a route for a file name that is within the pages folder. I can write whatever I want right here. It's always going to match the pattern because it is under docs and then under something which is going to be, which Next.js is going to assume as the ID property of the file name. If we just take a step back to make this more visible, let's just rename this to a dogo and go back to the page. This is what would happen if we stuck to predefined path-based components. It was gonna show a 404 for every page that it doesn't exist. The only one that exists is the one defined by that specific route generated by that specific file, so a dogo. And now if you go back to a dynamic type, everything is gonna exist with underdocs. Okay, so now that we have this, let's make this more dynamic. So what does this gives us? Naming the file bracket ID and another bracket 
we're going to say to Next.js that there are going to be routes within Docs specified by any URL. And that part of the URL is going to be assigned to something that we wanted to call ID. So but how can we access the ID that is on the route? Part that is within the brackets is the dynamic part of the route. Everything else is fixed. Our docs folder is fixed and the pages that we had before were fixed. So this is dynamic because it is within the brackets. So to access the dynamic part of the route, which is the part that's within, that's gonna be within the brackets. So the first part after the slash docs, we can access it through the Next.js router directly and accessing the query object within the router. So for a specific example that we're gonna use right here, let's just give it a more realistic name. So it's gonna be Russell. This is gonna mean is that the Next.js router is gonna have an object within it called query and the contents of that object for our specific case is gonna be ID Russell. That's what Next.js is gonna give us through the router. Then if we were to change this to Luna, which is my dog, then the Next.js router will give us a query object with the ID value of Luna. Let's do that in actual code. So this is a page. This is the page that we are rendering for every match of that route. What we want here is to access the router and within a React component, you can use the hook that Next.js provides you to access it. And then we're gonna say that just the router equals use router right here. That's gonna import it for us. And that's done. Const query equals router query. Yeah, I'm using, I believe it is Copilot. Yeah, I have Copilot active. So it is suggesting everything for me already. But yeah, so this would be the query and then the ID would be query.id. Yeah, but I don't like to use this that, that way. I'm gonna use a destructuring functionality of JavaScript. So I'm gonna do const ID equals router.query. I'm gonna delete both of these. Okay, what we're doing here is creating a variable to store our Next.js router. Then we're destructuring the ID property of our router query that we know is gonna be there because it is defined by the dynamic parameter of our file. So now what we can do is actually say that instead of just showing a predefined message for all dogs, we can use that variable that we created right there. So we're gonna say that this is a and then place the ID. If we now go back, we can check already that the heading says this is Luna. And if we now do Russell, it's gonna be the exact same component, the exact same rendering, but it's gonna be using the ID that is reading from the route. Now I call this ID, but probably something like name, just for the use case that we are trying to use right here. Or if you wanna use ID, it can also be just a number and that would be the ID of it in your database, but it would be lame just to show this right here. So what's normally the use case is that you extract the ID right here, then you would do some API call with the ID. This would give some type of dog data, and then you would use the data right here. For example, let's say you would have data dot, what, no, not this one, data dot name something like this. And that way you would be building each individual dog page on the client side through an API call right here. And that is it. That is how you can use dynamic routing within Next.js to create an infinite number of pages within your application without creating a single React component for every one of them. In the next video, we're going to be talking about how you can go over this. So instead of doing the API call on the client side component. We're gonna be talking about how we can use server side rendering to generate static pages for each individual dog, still using the dynamic pages. But the difference is that we're gonna tell Next.js exactly how many IDs we're gonna be having to generate those static pages. So this one right here is client side rendering. So everything we pass here is gonna match the route and then is gonna do something with it. And the other option is server side rendering which is different and is going to enable more control over your data and over the pages that you have. 
So if you want to take a look at that video when it's released, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and help other ones find it. And you can also connect with me on Twitter and I'll be happy to answer any question you might have. So until then, and happy coding.